Here's a beginner lesson for rock and blues soloing. Learn the common bends within the pentatonic box. We'll be in the key of E minor for this example. So 12th fret box that we all know and love. If I go up to the 15th fret of the B string, or the highest note on that B string within the box, and bend up a whole step, I'll get the root or the tonic, which is E, and that's a good starting point of where you can bend within that box in a minor key. Another spot would be the 14th fret in this box, which would be the highest note on the G string if you were to switch keys or something. And when you bend that up a whole step, you'll get the 5th of the chord. So those are two good starting points for where you can bend within that box. Give it a shot. Here's a burn and blues lick to learn, and if you already know it, I'm going to show you a couple tips when using it at the end of this video. So A. Alright, so 7th fret on the G string. 5th fret on B and E, 8th fret on the B, pull off to 5th fret, repeat that, and we'll add a bend on the G string. I like to use hybrid picking, so pick, middle, and ring. Pick, middle, ring. Or I can sweep pick this, down, 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 up, pull off, down, 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 up, pull off. A couple cool tricks is I can move it to the 10th fret and it'll stay within a minor pentatonic. If I move it up two frets, it'll stay within A minor at least. Or I could sidestep to get more of an outside sound. Give those a shot. Here's a tip for finger picking. Learn how to Travis pick. There are several variations of this pattern. Here's an example. We're going to use an A minor chord, and we're going to exclude the two E strings. We're only going to use A, D, G, B and we're gonna use these three fingers, so thumb, index, and middle. We're gonna to refer to the A string and the B string as the outside notes, and we're gonna to refer to the uh, D string and G string as the inside notes. So we'll start with the outside notes, A and B strings, with our thumb and our middle finger together, and then we'll go to our inside notes, D and G, thumb, index, and then we'll go to the outside, thumb, middle, and then inside, thumb, index, and then we'll start it over by playing those two notes together on the outside. So we have outside, inside, outside, inside, outside together, inside, outside, inside, outside together, and then we'd have this. Give it a shot. Here's a cool little trick for guitar players. We're gonna start with this chord, which is a D chord, using the A shape of the cage system. It's a bar shape that many of us know. We can use any key we want, but we're gonna use D for this example. If we play the mirror image of that, we're gonna leave these three notes and we're gonna move that one up to the ninth fret. Kinda of looks like what would be a mirror image of that. We maintain the same chord, except now the third is in the bass, but it's the same chord, just notes are rearranged, and now we're in the uh, pentatonic box of that key. So you can do a little lead guitar Jimi Hendrixy stuff. And you're in your pentatonic box, so give that a shot. Here are 10 scales that work over a static dominant 7 chord. The minor pentatonic and blues scale. The major pentatonic and the added blues note there as well. Uh, Mixolydian. Dorian. Uh, Lydian flat 7. Mixolydian flat 6. Half hold diminished, or maybe even Phrygian dominant or Mixolydian flat nine, flat thirteen. Give those a shot. Here's a way to break out of the single pentatonic box shape that a lot of players get stuck in. If we're in A minor, I'm talking about this shape. It'd be fifth fret, E string. Root. So something that holds a lot of players back is that they've spent too much time in that one box getting extremely comfortable and never exploring out. So then when they do explore out, they have excuses like, I've lost my feel, it doesn't feel natural, I feel uncomfortable. And those things are true. That's what's going to happen. That's what's meant to happen. 
You're not going to feel comfortable when you explore out at first. And, and you just have to lean into that and accept that as a reality. And that's okay. You will get comfortable with them if you lean into the discomfort of it. So take that first box shape, for example. You can find a shape that's very similar to that if you go to the 12th fret A string root. Similar fingering. So what you can start to do is take all your licks and language and idea from that first box shape and move them to that new box shape. Give it a shot. Here's something cool about the diminished seven arpeggio. This arpeggio is symmetrical on the guitar, meaning that every inversion of it is the exact same shape. And in this case, it'll be every three frets where you use the exact same shape. So let's learn one of the shapes you could use. You'll go to the 11th fret of the G string, play 14th fret, 13th fret on the B string, and then 11th and 14th on the high E string again. So you kind of see the symmetry right there. And I can move this every three frets and get all the different inversions. So how could we use this? Well, there's several ways, but if you want to get maybe like a harmonic minor sound, that might be one way. So what you can do is if we're in the key of E minor in this case, you go to your E, your root, go down a half step, and that's where that arpeggio would start in that key, giving you a harmonic minor sound. Give it a shot. Have you heard of two string symmetrical patterns? They're also sometimes called horizontal patterns, but I prefer to call them two string symmetrical because that's what they are. It's a pattern on two strings that is symmetrical across the octaves. Let me explain. We're gonna take an A minor pentatonic, and we're gonna start from the G in that scale, which is actually third fret of the uh, E string, and we're gonna go third, fifth, third, fifth, slide up to seventh, and then from there it's the same pattern, but now starting off the octave. So fifth fret of the D string. Five, seven, five, seven, nine. And then again from the next octave, which is eighth fret of the B string. Eight, 10, eight, 10, up to 12. So now we have this pattern that is symmetrical across octaves. It's the same pattern three times up the octave. Give it a shot. Here are three great blues licks you should know how to play that help kind of meld the major and minor pentatonic sounds. We're in A. Here's the first one. Second one. Third one. Give those a shot. Tabs in my bio. Here's a cool tapping trick. If you play an E minor pentatonic, and you tap on the 19th fret for every string, it's a really simple way to stay within the key and not have to move any notes around. You can move this around different keys as long as your tap note is 7 frets above your root note. So in this case, your E minor, so which is 12th fret. Give it a shot.